Okay, I think we're on with Loom. Yeah, I could have turned my camera on. I'm, I'm a bit... Uh, I've decided to not have the camera on, so I'm just this big glowing orb in the corner. All right, so I just want to make a quick scratch tutorial about... Because uh, I've solved... I have puzzled this particular question. Messages in Scratch. I really shouldn't open that in the, in the video, but this might not be published. Hi, said Chelsea Mohammed 109 and hi to him um i had in my stuff so what i want to do is have something where let's say i've got a variable where i store the number of lives i have and instead of having a big you know like display let me let me load something of mine actually you can see here's one i made earlier but in order to make it interesting i have made a very simple game basic game that's this one i've got a whole bunch of stuff don't i i can delete untitled four i encourage you to clean your scratch folder this is my visual variable tutorial i'll share it i think very, very quickly um after this in fact the end of this video is going to be me sharing the visual variable tutorial and then putting the links and so on but let's use the basic game to actually contextualize it a little bit better and also because i've written the game so i might as well use it it's a very basic game where you are a dot, a blob, a sort of spot of like a given color. I think you're purple, yeah. So like you, the player, are purple, and you move using the arrows, and I'm using the steps. Uh, you know, move a couple of steps to whatever, um, I think, of scratch, and of course that's kind of very uh, quite jittery, but we can live with that. And then you need to pick up the green, the green bits and avoid the red ones. And that's not very difficult, but if you... Hit the red one, you die. Oh dear, and I've lost, and I have a counter of lives in the corner. So I have a live viable. It's inside. So here's my thing, the control of the thing that's a little bit moot. Let me uh, real quick clean up the blocks. What we will do, we're gonna take, we're gonna make a, um, we are gonna make a duplicate of, let's say the life sprite, because there is the, there's the life sprite, as it happens in the game, so you get like you pick up this up and you get one up on your lives, and then it, it disappears because it's on the kind of you know, um, random loop of being yeah. Wait until you touch the player and you increment the life scanter, and of course the red one do the exact opposite, and that is the same code, but there's a minus one, and the enemy right uh, change lives by minus one. It's that simple. Uh, but life two, we're gonna call it so always you know kind of let's name our stuff quite well. This is I'm gonna call it display life. Display life, I'm gonna make it 50% of the actual life. So that's the actual life. I don't know if you, yeah, you can see my, is it like a way of highlighting the, because I do it with my, I can do it with the system because Mac OS does that, makes the, if I really, it doesn't even do it. Like I can, I can, make, can make the cursor bigger. I wanted to have some splashes or something to highlight. Anyway, this bright is the life. The small one is the display life. So I'm gonna take that. And so what I want is that instead of having, I'm going to leave, no, actually, I'm going to put it, I can put it on top or behind. I don't really know how it, it, this goes. It's going to go behind. It has gone behind. Yeah, that's a bit daft. Okay, so I'm going to put the, I'm going to move the readout and put it above, right? But it doesn't really matter. Um, so that I'm, at zero, I shouldn't have any, actually. But so this is the display life. Um, the display life is the one we're going to use so that this would be let's say this is one life i've got one life so how would i do that i would make a touch if I just pick this up yeah but one i've got one i'm happy and what i want is that like when lives get increased i see a second one here and a third one and when it's decreased and so on and if it reaches zero that's a whole other tutorial this is meant to be like a blitz i'm already at four minutes i cannot believe it i want to go much faster this is meant to be a blitz tutorial blitz learner um so at lightning speed if i'm trying to remember how this works we don't need this because it, it was duplicated from the original life what we do want no i've duplicated it again that's so stupid mm, i apologize okay let's give it the clean this is my display line very clean very nice who's decided to go into a completely weird place because Let's put it at top Y. Um, too faulty. Oh, that sound. That's too high. 
Yeah, I only really used to 180 anyway, right? So what did we find out? 160 maybe? Yeah, that's like a good place for my little round green ball here. Now what I want to do is actually hide. Uh, now I have tried making duplicates, making clones, right? Because like you've got all of this. It's in event actually, right? Isn't it? And like when I start as a clone, and then we can broadcast thing. We can create clones, don't I? Like it's in there somewhere, surely, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's at the bottom of control, and then all of the and trying to kind of like create and hide and 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 show clones as the thing progresses. I think this might work. In fairness, this may work if you want just like something simple, like you have it or you don't. You would can you could make a clone of the thing that could work in clones. And for a couple, up to a couple. But really, if you want a generic thing, I find that the simplest, less bug, because it gets really buggy. Because like when you get, when you, we use messages, and when you get the message, then both the original and the clone get the. It's just annoying. So I couldn't make it work. So I, I looked up a tutorial that does it a certain way. And we're not using make a block. We're using the thing that's kind of hidden by my uh, lovely avatar. I, maybe I'm the only one who can see that. I don't know. Um, yes. Let's just move it slightly, not further the middle. This here, uh, bottom left, the blue bit, where we're going to add like the extensions, and there is pen. Uh, pen is just what it says. It's like a dead simple thing. It, it has a, it uses the sprite that you have to, that can also as the tip of a pen, if you will, and so that can. But one thing that so let me just move that back. <laughs> One thing that this can do is something called stem, which is to create a new duplicate of the stem of the sprite in a specific location. So here's what we want to do. We're going to want a new message. So what we have, we we're still going to use a live variable. We're just going to hide it, right? But I you know I did at the end once I've got proven that this you know, work with the new system. Um, but what we are going to do is have every time we either lose or gain a life. I'm going to want the whole of the live bar to be recalculated. So, I'm saying that right, aren't I? Yes, yeah, because we also use an erase all. So in order to ensure that, this is just a counter. So at any given moment, it should be aware of how many lives there are. But every time we change the variable, we need a message to the counter. So the visual counter, the sprite, receives the message. Because think about it. The way to communicate with sprites is with messages because they have the super useful when I receive the message yada 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 and that's an event. I've clicked the wrong color of of yellow and we are going to want a new message. It's not it's not going to stem straight away, right? But we're going to new, want a new message called new message called called um, update lives. You can name it whatever you want, but I'm going to call it update live. So where are we first? Of course, like when are we going to send that message? Very simple. Every time we touch the the live variable, so we can't unfortunately make. If it was real code, sometimes you can kind of make make a trigger or wrap it into a an accessor like a getter and a setter. But um, the uh, the more more object oriented ones, you know what I'm talking about. But in in this instance. Um, we are going to have to keep our lives variable, the value of our live variable, and the display in, in sync. We are going to need to fire a message. So we're going to, here, if we change the lives by minus one, we broadcast update lives. Similarly, in life, the real life, not the display life, we also going to broadcast update live at the end after we change the lives. Uh, that's all I need here. I had a very much simpler version with just two buttons, one that increases and decreases, but I thought I'll, I'll do a very basic game to kind of contextualize it. Now remember, if you make another, I don't know why you would, but like let's say you've got another type of sprite that gives you a bonus, or or indeed like you've got more likely you've got some code somewhere else that touches this variable. Say bang, you like you know you're going on a big adventure. Here, here's ten lives because you've talked to the wizard. Remember to broadcast update lives. So whenever you touch the variable, you just have to know that when you get the thing, change lives, like broadcast the update. Um, which means that all display life by default, when the flag is clicked, is one of those um, generator sprites, if you will. It makes clones of itself. It doesn't really have any function in the game. It's it's an element of UI, user interface. So when the green flag is clicked, first thing I'm going to say is hide, which I'm pretty sure is a look. Yes. Excellent. And when I receive update lives, I will want to loop. That's control. I'm going to repeat. 
conveniently, I have a variable called lives. Repeat lives time. And first, I'm going to erase it all. Yeah, of course. I almost forgot. Yep. Yeah. Those are, of course, remember, those are blocked from the pen extension of Scratch, which I have activated at the bottom left of my screen. Uh, so when I was able to like, and stamp, yeah, not just stamp, we're going to want to be a bit more clever because it's all in the motion, isn't it? Uh, so we are going to go to this particular place when the green flag is clicked, of course. Well, I mean, this is where we should spawn. But in particular, when we receive a date, like we're going to go there because that's going to be the first of the lives. Is it here? Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, oh, I have done something. We'll see. Um, Yeah, that that work. Okay, so we are. I, my, well, I'm, I'm I'm fancying it a little bit further in. Say minus two two five. Is that good? Fire that. Yeah, that's a bit better. First live would be here. Actually, it's a bit too. I've just been being annoying now. I want it to be lined up with the the display of the variable. Yeah, that will do. All right. So this is we got one live, so that's good. And every time we update the live, so we're gonna. Go to the position where we want the first one, erase all, stamp, and then move to the right before we uh, change X by, call it 10 initially. We'll see how that plays out. Um, I have no idea that I'll adjust that as I go along. And then be ready to stem the next one. So we stem, then we move. So if I've got two, I'm going to go to my, this is the place of my first one. If I've got zero, it's going to just erase all. And hopefully we'll have something else that tests to the game over. The game over, as I said, is not our problem here. I launched my game. Uh, it wasn't running when I was testing this code by just clicking on it. I now control, remember, the purple blob with my arrows. I can gain lives, and you will see, boom. OK, so clearly 10, that's not enough. So let's try 15. So they don't kind of collide in each other. And so interestingly, you know, we don't update the life. We should really also update the life at the start of the game because that should really be initialized. Or you should start with a certain number of lives. Um, that would be that would be another example of the initialization code. I might actually put that on the player if I'm honest, or on the li on the life or on the live display itself, or even on the backdrop. This is the kind of code that doesn't really matter because you're going to change the value of a variable when the green flag is clicked. So you could put this one in. And let's say I put my initialization of my variable. I'm going to start my game with set lives to free. Ideally, I would have another variable called the configuration variable, where I could make that value easily editable somewhere else, for instance. But that might be overkill. <laughs> and then I have an event, which is a broadcast event, where we broadcast update lives. So we start at free. So the display itself will reset. That, that That's going to allow me to retry different distances. Boom. I got three lives, they're spaced like that. Is 15 too much? I don't know. The importance is that it's alive, right? Boom, I've lost a, a life. Uh, I'm going to lose another life. Oh, I've lost another life. I've got a second life. Uh, I'm going to get a third life. Yay, I am acing this game. It's quite cool because I think, did I make some inertia? No, not yet. I've got like, I'm working on another little tutorial thing because I want to kind of uh, illustrate some physics concept like friction and acceleration and speed or velocity as it's known to the. Uh, <laughs> Again. Uh, anyway, so now the, the only thing we have to do, that's only 15 minutes, this way too long, uh, viable. I'm just going to hide this. Oh, life, because I don't need to see it anymore. And boom, I have a game with a live counter. Uh, it can be a little bit glitchy because it takes time to redraw, a little bit like a VU thing, which is quite cool because, you know, it's like a your stereo. As you start having a lot of life, it's taking a lot of time to draw, but that's, that's I guess that's, <laughs> that's life. So, um, in order to illustrate that, I'm also going to go to my stuff and no, I'm going to, do I want to save now? I might save as a copy, I want to say. No, I'm going to, well, save it now. It's done now. I'm not going to publish the basic game because that's a little bit moot. I'm going to publish something different and share with you something that I have in my stuff. That's a much simpler illustration of that. And you can almost rip the code, just like delete two sprites. And effectively, you've got your visual variable sorted. You just need to change the costume or change the sprite. So let's have a look at this. I just go there. I should really have done scene. Well, I should have seen inside. Oh, I want to see inside the thing. All right, baby, show me your guts. 
my blitz tutorial is not blitz at all but still i'm testing uh, i'm testing what's his face loom so that's double win all right i just get two buttons subtract and add each of them uh change the value of the variable and uh, if i've got you know three glasses or two glasses or one glass or and there you go so all you need to do is something where you change the value of the variable and you break less i've called it a refresh class so yeah there you go and i'm going to share this um i call that visual variable in that case because it doesn't have to be a health bar it can be like how many power-ups have you got how many uh rockets how many grenades it's unfortunate that it's very thing so uh add illustration uh of to make visual counter counters for variables eg health bars with find out how it works or look at this loom because i expect to be able to paste what i've just done and record it just in here not while it's running obviously uh, with not with, so it's not so much with glasses uh it's not so much about with glasses it is about the um, stem function of the pen extension particular with using, I shouldn't really be in the recording, should it? I might trim it. Um, the stamp lock of the pen scratch. So it's not native scratch. It's not like vanilla scratch. But then, in fairness, the extension they're pretty like well tested and almost kind of part of scratch compared to like what's in Scratch Labs, which I urge you to check out. Um, which actually gave me the idea for that because this is stuff where you can uh, a much more elegant way of displaying text than any of the options we have in scratch already it's something that to be fair has been missing from scratch for a long time so i'm kind of really looking forward to that but that's a whole other conversation uh notes and credits not just completely unnecessary um i'm just like uh, probably make that like a how to illustration all right that's all that shared yes and i'm going to add it to my acton town acton code club studio and yeah i'll see you in club or on uh, youtube or on loom thanks for watching